You know, it seems there's no end to the COVID vaccine misinformation. And a couple of interesting questions come up. One person wanted to know if concern about a dye in the vaccine is warranted, while another asked if there were any truth to the allegation that the swabs used to take a nasal sample for PCR testing contain magnetic particles that are used to tag people to act as a beacon so that they can, for some mysterious reason, be followed. Well, since I know that there's no dye in the vaccine, I wondered how such a worry had arisen. You know, in rare cases, individuals can have an allergic reaction to the vaccine, and there's some suspicion that this may be due to polyethylene glycol that is used to encapsulate and protect the mRNA in the vaccine. It is the mRNA that codes for the production of the virus's spike protein that immune cells then recognize as an invader and produce antibodies against it. So next time the antibodies encounter the spike protein, which may be on an active virus, they bind to it and prevent the virus from infecting a cell. Since the vaccine does contain polyethylene glycol, people with a known allergy to this chemical are advised against taking the vaccine. Now for the dye connection. Someone with a known allergy to the radio contrast dyes that are used in MRI and CT scans asked the physician if these dyes were components of the COVID vaccines, having heard of vaccine allergies. Not an unreasonable question. But polyethylene glycol has nothing to do with radio contrast dyes that are usually compounds of iodine or gadolinium. People with an allergy to such dyes can safely get the vaccine. In any case, I think this is the way the stories emerged about the COVID vaccine containing a dye. It's like the game of telephone, in which a message is whispered from one to another, and by the time it emerges from the last person, it has completely changed. Now, touching on the second question about implanting magnetic particles. The swabs are made of nylon microfiber and contain no metal of any kind. However, when the sample on the swab is tested in the lab, nanoparticles of iron oxide with a special coating that attracts mRNA molecules are added. These nanoparticles are paramagnetic, meaning that they can be magnetized by and be attracted to an external magnet. This allows for their separation from solution by using an external magnet. Once separated, reagents are used to release the bound mRNA, which is then subjected to analysis via the polymerized chain reaction, the PCR reaction. Once more, it is a hodgepodge of misunderstandings, or in some cases, deliberate distortion of facts that result in the spread of misinformation. And that for today, is our cup of joe.